are the taxiways. This is also a taxiway is actually parallel to the runway, okay, where an aircraft enters and exits into the uh, parking. Then you have aircraft stand. Aircraft stand is your parking bay. You call it as a parking bay where your aircraft is parked. Then your hangar. Hangar is where your, what do you say? Um, hangar is where your manufacturing and repairing happens. Any competence issues, any repairing purpose needs to be done to the aircraft. So it would happen in the hangar. Then um, you have control tower. Of course, control tower is ATC, base control tower. And eighth one is your parking. Okay, eighth one is your parking. Now, we will see what runway is. Now, runway is an area, as we all know, where the takeoff and landing of an aircraft happens. Okay. Now, if we say there is an FOD on runway, FOD is foreign object, is on the runway. There is grass, there is a dirt, even a small snake, let's say, you know, all these kinds of run, actually airports is near to the forest kind of place. So, you know, there's a possibility that you get a, a snake on the runway, okay. So, uh, Actually, we had got it in BL Airport uh, when I was working for airport, okay, apart from airline, when I was working for airport, I had got that, you know, we had a small uh, kuti snake on the, uh, you know, on the runway and uh, before the next aircraft landing, we need, we had to be uh, vacating that snake from the runway. Uh, so what we had to do is we need to immediately take up the animal, uh, you know, team. We have we have a set of uh, you know uh, people who takes care of plants. We have uh, you know live animals team with us. So all these kinds of things uh, we have departments in the airport. So we had to take them up. Uh, by the time I don't know what had happened. By the time we went there, it was already dead. Okay, it was a dead snake. So we had to pick it up and put it in our vehicle, our follow me vehicle. Okay, follow me's are those vehicle which takes the uh, aircraft from the runway that is diverting the aircraft from the runway to their parking stand. Okay, so if you could, could have seen in many airports, if you have traveled, they, there would be an yellow vehicle moving in front of an air, aircraft. Okay, so those are follow me's which direct, uh, you know, the aircraft to their stands. So that is totally the airport staffs. Okay, so if you're working for BIL, you come to know uh, it's, it's the BIL starts. So, you know, uh, so we they, they are the one who do the inspections also. So, uh, so we had to take the snake and literally, you know, throw it somewhere. They, we can't randomly throw it anywhere. So we will have to give it to the live animal people only. They will take care of that and many such things is there. Okay. So for us, every life is important. So <laughs> we did that. Uh, I still remember that. It, it, it's, it's a re it, this is one of a risky job, okay? If you love to explore it, uh, please join BIL, okay? You will know what apron is. You will know what apron staffs are doing, okay? That's, that's the same way as you work for uh, ATC and uh, as a pilot. Because entire operation is managed by you. You are the kings of that airport because that airport comes under you. All the systems, all everything is managed by you guys. So, you know, apron is a little more tough uh, at the night time because all the international flights and huge, huge flights would be landing. Uh, uh, I, I remember uh, I had a situation where, uh, you know, uh, the Dragon Air, Dragon Air, the Hong Kong flight, okay, uh, had stopped on the runway because of... Uh, because there was no fuel so it landed perfectly uh, there was a landing landed happened properly but uh, as soon as it landed the fuel got over and it was not able to move from the runway and we had emirates landing in a couple of minutes oh my god that that was the tougher toughest time actually it was a cloudy, uh, uh, you know, you can't say it as cloudy. It was a snowy night, actually, you know. 
we had a bad snow we couldn't be able to see and the pilot immediately informed atc stating that you know for fuel has been over so once he has landed in the uh, uh, once he has touched down in the runway and he said he needs he requires an help because in a couple of minutes he heard that emirates is landing so we just had uh, four minutes because uh, emirates had already approached so uh, emirates was a user aircraft too and if this was on runway it would have been crashed and we just had four minutes we need to remove this particular dragon air from uh, the runway so we immediately bought the tow bar tow bar i showed you right it's a kind of tractor thing which ha- pulls the aircraft yeah so they connected the uh, tow bar to the uh, uh, dragon air and they the tow bar started pulling the dragon air within four minutes we had to move on to a taxiway and uh, i i still remember that view when we turned when the aircraft turned to the taxiway the emirates landed so it was it was like you know uh, uh, fire in our hearts because we thought a simple touch on both the aircraft would crash the runway both the flights would have got crashed so it's not only the aircrafts the lives on board would have also gone and life of us would have also gone so we were holding the entire dragon air was having around 460 passengers on board and emirates was having around since it was a huger aircraft uh, we had approximately around 670 passengers on board oh my god God. so we we need to take care of this entire lives so we had to immediately you know vacate the runway and i i very badly remember as we were pushing the the dragon had turned on to the nearest uh, taxiway okay the early way to uh, clear out the runway is where you can enter into a taxiway which is near now if if an aircraft has come to a point which has stopped okay immediately it needs to turn to the nearest taxiway you don't need to think that okay end i will go and turn that is not important you need to be vacating the runway quickly 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 every time quickly because once it has come to a stability once the speed of an aircraft has come to a stability the pilot needs to be turning his aircraft to the taxiway okay because you never know a busiest airport like delhi uh, mumbai and all you know there is a continuous landing and take off so you need to be vacating quickly as soon as possible so this was one of the very bad situation which i had faced because we hadn't have our food for a whole night and we were just running behind this and this is again an incident we need to be creating a report for this so it was horrible and as and when the dragon air turned from the taxi way the emirates landed so it was just a a second of gap that we had but our efforts made it so but at the end of the day we were happy that we were able to save the lives of many of them so we we also play a part in that okay so if at all you're getting into an operations don't think that oh my god this is such kind of a job no because you are holding you are also a part of it now let's say a load and trim staff is coming and saying that you know there is a you know he's the one who gives the uh, weight of an aircraft okay now let's say there's a 180 passengers on board he calculates the uh, you know uh, usually if it's uh, adults then the calculation goes for 75 kgs and if it is for infants the i believe the calculation goes as 10 okay so the load and strain staff will start uh, you know calculating now all the 180 passengers on board then his total weight would be this much the cargo weight is this much uh you know if there is one passenger minus that is a passenger has not boarded the aircraft and uh, he is a no show passenger he has not come to the gates then he need to be minusing 175 kg from this that is 180 passengers into 75 okay 75 kg now one passenger is not there then he needs to be again calculating it from 179 into uh 75 okay and with the cargo plus the cargo weight plus the catering weight so everything load and trim is also a little bit tough job 
So then he needs to be giving that to the pilot. If the pilot says, yes, yes, I, I agree to that, then it, if some pilots are so traumatic, okay, they are also dramatic kind of thing. They say that, no, I, I don't accept this because the fueling uh, weight is only this much. Fuel weight is this much. How can you say this is the only weight in the aircraft? So please recalculate it and come back. So in that case also, again, the load and trim staff needs to be calculating all these things. So it's... it's Everywhere it's a complicated process. So once once at all you start working, you will come to know what at all are the difficulties and what is the fun working in that field. Okay. Now coming back to runway. So if at all uh, we all know that on the runway we have all special markings. If tend by this, okay. I hope to see show you here the black color. You see there are white lines, okay, white larger lines, and yellow lines towards the end of the runway this means th this yellow line means that the the runway ending is there okay now both the sides of the runway you will have certain numbers now 9 27 uh, 36 47 so this is something where you know you it directs the uh, runway strength okay so in Bangalore airport, we have nine in one side and 27 in the other side. So if you could, if you, when you start hearing to the ATC conversation, they say that, uh, okay, 61A to taking off on runway nine. Okay. Uh, EK506 taking on from runway 27. So that is the number where they give. Okay. That means they are taking off from runway nine. Okay, from the side of nine, number nine, or if they are taking off from 27, they say that they are taking off from runway 27. So that, that is how the process takes place when the conversation also happens. Okay. Now you have a set of lightning also in the runway. As I said, you, you have white lights, you have uh, yellow lights, you have green lights. Okay, green lights is majorly there on the runways. Okay, and uh, yellow lights onto your taxiways. Okay. So these are set of lights which will uh, denote the pilot as in where the beginning is there and where the end is there. Okay, so that is the thing. Now, uh, uh, markings and, okay, I have told you, uh, markings, I've told you about lights also. So that is the general term in the runway. Now, if you see, see, 36, did you see this number? This is January 36 and towards this end of the marking also they would have money. If you could see here, see 18, 36. See? Okay. If you come to terminal building, I told you what and all are the procedures taken from terminal building. You have uh, lounges, your bars, you have, you know, resting places, your commercial areas, your restaurants, all such things. In some airports you also have spas right where you can spend your time so terminal building is that so this is the terminal building now just a mere view they have given immigration now, also on, comes under terminal hmm? yes immigration also comes under terminal okay mm, now um aprons Aprons is where the maneuvering of an aircraft takes place, okay, or where the aircraft has come to a park, okay. As I told you, when you turn from the runway, okay, into the taxiway and you exit the taxiway, from that exit, the apron starts, okay. From that exit, where you're exiting the runway, okay, taxiway also have a parallel line, you're exiting the line, you're coming to the parking bay. From that area, the apron starts, okay? So it is sometimes called as a ramp. So you generally, apron is called by uh, the, uh, what do you say, airport staffs. So for an airline staff, it is ramp, of course. Okay? So apron is something where it holds more number of aircrafts, okay? Your parking base is a part of an apron. So it is it, in apron, you know, in on runways, you none of the vehicles would be moving, but on the aprons, there are buses being moving, there are, uh, you know, cars being moving, there are uh, trolleys being moving. So apron is those places where all the operations happens. Okay, a ramp is those place that kind of place where all the operations of an aircraft takes place. Your fueling, your catering, your you know, you have all such kind of vehicles there. Okay, running here and there. So that is an apron. 
I have the image here I'll show you. So this is the apron. If you see all see this is the runway, clear image. This is the taxiway, right opposite to that, parallel. If you could see there is one aircraft uh, exiting the runway. Did you see this? Yeah, this is the taxiway. And this is this entire thing from taxi from apart from the runway, everything is apron. Everything is April. Okay. So taxiway, taxiway, I already told you, it's a path on an airport. Okay. Connecting the runways and ramps. Okay. This is one of the, uh, it, it, it is actually parallel to the runway. It connects the runway and it connects the apron. Okay. So aircraft moves from that particular area. Okay. Aircraft stand, of course, your parking bay where your aircraft has been parked. Generally, this particular thing is called as aircraft stand. Okay. I guess you have uh, hangers after that. Ah, airport stand. Okay. Image has been showed. Control towers is, of course, your airfield tower ATC. Okay, where physically and, uh, you know, through radar, the observation takes place. Parking outside the terminal where your car parking, your vehicles has been parked. Okay, now hangers is not shown here. Hangar is generally a term of, uh, you know, where these kind of things. See? Inside this, the repairing takes place. So inside part is called as hangers. Okay, where the manufacture, uh, you know, the repairings and uh, what do you say, all sort of maintenance takes place is called as hangers. So these are the components of the airport layout, which I had actually missed out, actually missed out. So do you have any doubts in this? I'll make this all available on uh, thing, okay? You will have to give me some time because I don't know. Mohit sir is not able to access my files, it seems. So we are trying our best to you know, put it across. So let's see if possible. I will put it. I don't have a video to show you today. <laughs> okay, now since we have time, little time, I will tell you what and all is there. A simple topic for you know what I had to complete today. Okay, it's a very small topic. That's the reason I wanted to expand it because I don't want to put more pressure on you guys with new new topics. Okay, so but I will tell you I'll finish off this chapter three now itself, and if time permits, then we'll watch a YouTube uh, video on your runways and things like that, how the aircraft is landing, what is the lights and all. Because I have not downloaded it. I have, I have no videos. So we'll go directly go to the YouTube and watch it, okay? If we have time. Now, um, coming to the point of, let me just take that. Back to the tourism industry, because your chapter three is tourism industry. Okay, tourism industry, your next, next, next thing is that travel itinerary. Now, can anyone tell me what is travel itinerary? What is an itinerary? What's an itinerary, guys? Come on. You want me to tell in a simple one? What is a ticket? Journey. Journey. Travel. I'm asking. I'm asking you. What is a ticket? What's a ticket? No. What is a ticket? They are. It's a particular that, uh, item which allows you to travel. Yes, ma'am. Hey, it's 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 a particular item. Without a ticket, can you travel anywhere? 
without a ticket can you travel no so in aviation you don't call it as a ticket so please don't mention that as ticket anywhere it is travel itinerary okay so even you go to the airport they your check in staff will not ask for your ticket or oh, please give me your ticket because she is not a bus conductor no she will only ask can you show me your itinerary so this is how the words goes so please learn some of the aviation words if you really want to work in uh, uh, airline so this is how you learn for it a travel itinerary is a kind of scheduled things okay in your travel itinerary they would have mentioned on what day you're traveling what is your pnr where are you traveling which is the airline which uh, you are booked on and uh, you know what would be your uh, payment okay from which uh, place have you taken this uh, itinerary from that is make my trip or clear trip or directly from reservation so all these kinds of things would have mentioned in the travel itinerary now it is not a simple uh, task of choosing a destination right it's not a simple task of booking a ticket okay you randomly just choose, choose a ticket choose a place and you randomly book no that's not possible no you 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 get people who are traveling regularly yes it's a piece of cake for them because they they do re regularly business travel i i travel every day from bangalore to mumbai so i have no problem in that i can book that but when when a new passenger is traveling or let's say he he or she is doing a leisure travel then you you need to be getting on working for a lot of things okay you need to know where which airline is providing you with so much of luggage you need to know which airline is providing you with uh, you know less fares okay where is an uh, discount coming up all these things which should be known by you now it's it, it's actually not not easy to uh, get that now you have now that is travel itinerary so it's a specific item which allows you to travel okay now if i tell you what is the need of a travel itinerary why there is a need can you tell me so let's keep this as a discuss class because this is a simple thing so i don't want to you know show you the ppt and then you know, that's the reason i've just made in a word format so can you tell me why wh what is the need of this ticket what is the need of this itinerary the importance of travel itinerary is to book our slot for our traveling okay you're like, booking a slot you're yeah, booking a like slot for the seat but, like maybe it uh, maybe be a seat or maybe to get permitted in the airport we have to show in the entrance okay okay but in general what is the need of it record, sorry ma'am we have to maintain record like uh, from where to where this person is traveling correct that's a, that's a, that's actually a security question very good that that is based on security yes if there is a you know problem in the uh, let's say i i came to know that there was a problem in the last flight okay i immediately uh, have a record right the airlines is having a record stating that yeah this passenger traveled on this particular airline that, that's that's a good point that's a good point but actually tell me in a simple words what makes you in that what's the need of it travel in a travel itinerary is mainly important to know about your time okay being a passenger if i look in a passenger point of view my point is that in from travel itinerary i will come to know that what is the distance between bangalore and mumbai mumbai you reaching the destination with one and a half hours oh i am reaching my destination with one and a half hours so travel from travel itinerary you will come to know you are maximizing your time right now other airline if you see oh that takes two and a half hours oh that goes round away so if in a travel itinerary that will help you to maximize your time you can foresee your time okay then you can manage your expenditures of course you will come to know where why the ticket is costing 20000 okay underneath your travel itinerary they would have mentioned you stating that your user fees your user fund fees your facility charges your convenience fee all these would have been bifurcated so you will come to know for what you are paying that much of amount okay so it will shows you your expenditure then it will show you easier and faster travel from one point to another which uh, mushraf told right uh, even to enter into an airport you need need to have it okay so everything has been recorded a 
it will also help you to prioritize your wants. Now, if you're doing a travel, uh, you know, uh, itinerary, you will know what you need to be doing first. Okay? You need to be, uh, you know, for entering into an airport, you should be having your ID card. Yes, you need to show your itinerary and your uh, ID card. So itinerary always stands first. So it is where you're prioritizing your things. Okay? Then trip essentials are not forgotten. Of course, of course, if you have a ticket in your hand, you will never forget what and all you require in your, uh, for your trip. Okay, so that this is some of the needs which you always, uh, you know, uh, for a travel uh, itinerary is required. Uh, although, although you can do a itinerary by yourself, okay. But it is always important that you go via travel agency, okay? Because the best thing you could do is that they have a patent, okay? Now, let, if we are talking about a Make My Trip, Make My Trip uh, is selling seats, okay? With a little more, less charge compared to the reservation centers in the airport. So, the airline's direct charges is very much when you compare to the uh, online basis. So it's always good you purchase with a travel consultant or let's say you purchase online. So it is almost good. Now that is the need. Okay. Now any doubt in that travel, uh, sorry, travel itinerary? No, ma'am. No, ma no. Okay. Now we have needs. Okay, okay, sorry, it's the same thing. Uh, same PVD, I mean, same PDF, I -O. oh God, what am I saying? Same uh, word format, but I closed it one minute. I'll just open that. Now we will go for the need, okay? I told you about the need. Now we will go for the types, okay? What is the types and how the travel uh, uh Tickets, that is travel itinerary is being prepared, okay? Need of travel. Itinerary, okay? I told you what is the need of travel itinerary. Okay, now what is the key elements of, of doing a good itinerary? Now, for a designing an itinerary, let's say after you are, you know, passing your BBA, uh, apart from going to any uh, airport operations, you got a job in Make My Trip or you got a job in Wire.com or let's say you got a job in Clear Trip. So you should, you would be preparing an itinerary, right? So you should know how you're going to prepare a good itinerary. Okay. So first and foremost, you should know what is the program. Okay. What exactly is the passenger wants? Okay. You should know what are his programs. Now, if it is a round trip, if it is a single trip, all these kinds of things should be known by you. So you should know his program. Number two, his timetable. That is, if today he's traveling from here, Bangalore to Hong Kong, tomorrow he might be traveling from Hong Kong to US. Uh, day after tomorrow he might be, or after two days he might be traveling from US to UK. Oh my God complicated process so in that case you should know what his timetable is okay so as in when you can book the ticket for him then you should know what is the duration as i told you travel schedule today tomorrow day after tomorrow or after one month after six months so this is how uh, you know you should know the passengers travel schedule destination Grade and foremost, you should know where he is traveling to, first of all. Okay, without that, you wouldn't be able to book the ticket. The four A's. Four A's is that attraction, accessibility, accommodation, and amenities. Attraction, here it is. Attraction, accessibility, accommodation, and amenities. Okay, so this is where you need to know. Okay, you, your itinerary should be a great attraction okay looking at the itinerary you should say oh wow these guys have done the itinerary clearly that i could understand that accessibility is that with that he needs to be accessing everywhere now he's telling that oh i can go to uh, uh, you know 
from Bangalore to uh, UK, you, oh, okay. When looking at the itinerary, the person should feel, okay, I'm traveling to UK. My first, final destination is UK. So your thing shouldn't be complicated. Okay. Accommodation. Okay. Everything needs to be accommodated nicely in a single paper. There shouldn't be a two-paper itinerary. Not required. Amenities. Everything should be perfect. So amenities is that all the resources needs to be properly maintained in one paper. Okay. So... Uh, Okay, now what are the three different itineraries? So that is that compromises a great itinerary, okay, good looking itinerary. Now, what are the three types of itinerary? Now, this is a complicated thing which I have put up, but I will tell you in a single word. I have put up loop itinerary, star shaped itinerary, open jaw itinerary. So please don't go with this because it is a complicated one. I have I have put a sweet one which is there. Uh, simple and sweet one I will show you that it is there in the very end of the yeah this is your itinerary okay this is just a format I've shown you I've just taken up the weight see you are putting up the person you are just introducing it Okay, your trip is this, trip IP number is this, your trip IP number two, so and so destination would be this. Okay, you're traveling on eight days journey on 20, from, eight, from 8th to 21st Jan. Okay, so this and all, starting from starting to, so all this is, I've, I've just wiped off that date, okay, it's an on-time flight. So this this is how an itinerary looks. somewhere here I'm just looking where it is okay I will tell you that I think oh yeah yeah sorry huh? this 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 is the uh, this is the types of itinerary if you see one way itinerary, round trip itinerary, multiple city itinerary. It is the same as I have said here. Loop, I said you loop, star shaped, and all, right? It is the same, the other words, but don't go to loop and star shaped and all because you get confused. Okay, so you just need to remember one way itinerary, round trip itinerary, and multiple city itinerary. One way itinerary is your single flight between two cities. Okay, you are just traveling from Bangalore to Mumbai one way over round trip itinerary is that you are traveling from Bangalore to Mumbai and tomorrow you are traveling from Mumbai to Bangalore so it's a return ticket okay multiple city itinerary is this where it includes more than two cities now if I say Bangalore to Mumbai tomorrow from Mumbai to Delhi Day after tomorrow from Delhi to Bangalore. So it includes more uh, more than two number of cities. That is you are traveling to more than two destinations with a single itinerary. This one itinerary is enough for you for the entire travel you have got. So that is called as multiple city itinerary. So there are three types of itineraries. One way round trip and multiple city itineraries. Okay. So don't forget that. So uh, what I will do is I'll just uh, you know I'll just delay the, this off. It's the same way. Loop itinerary is is the one way itinerary. Okay, so then I'll just uh, one way star shaped is where. Okay, it's actually not required to you guys. I'll just delete this off. Okay, now uh, these are some of the five types of itineraries which it, it's generally not used in airline but uh, when we say it is it is there they like your tourist itineraries you have your tour managers itinerary and all okay uh, 
now uh, these are with some questions have written what are the three rules of flight itinerary planning is that first and foremost you should avoid uh, criss crossing that is you know match the following shouldn't be done in the itinerary okay he's traveling from bangalore to mumbai mumbai to delhi over match the following should not be done in the itinerary avoid backtracking okay if at all you know you have already given a, uh, a person an itinerary you are not supposed to backtrack it again no remember that less carriers use the better so usually it, it it is only some of the perfect teams which do the itinerary okay like make my trip clear way if you see all these people's itinerary they, it, it it is awesome okay there is no confusion in their itineraries and you see it's all perfect okay from what day the person is oh what his name is so and so he's traveling from so and so to so and so date he's traveling from this destination to destination he'll be back to the country by this time so this is the perfect way they have mentioned together now importance of itinerary i've already told you what is an itinerary ticket i told you now major kinds of itinerary i have told you now how to create also i told you you should be in, in, in you know knowing about the program you should be knowing about the duration you should be knowing about the time now this is something as how you form a template now when you when you create it when you start printing it on a paper you should know that first and foremost you should click on the itinerary template and there you need to be start putting a ready made template as in starting from starting to starting uh, date to, to date from all these things you need to be putting and introduction and overview you need to be putting like how i showed you in the last itinerary i showed you right hi shalin uh you would be traveling from so and so destination have a safe flight so this is just an introduction you put insert the dates insert the dates that from which date to which date you are traveling provide other useful details that is your id card number if at all you are you are having some sort of id card you are putting up you will be bringing your other card number with you if possible put that number okay so when you are going to the airport you need to be taking other card only okay so some uh, itinerary people will not mention that any id card would be fine okay so that's the reason they don't men mention any such other details and uh, apart from other details you need to be mentioning your name okay your destination where you're traveling for how many days you would be traveling so all those things okay then you need to download down and print you need to download it and you should start printing it okay that's the one then i guess yeah so this is the example of a perfect itinerary see he is having a multiple travel if you could see multiple travel is having is two, two child uh, two child uh, two adults and zero child is there okay two uh, it's a group of five i believe so all traveling 21st 29th 20 uh a you know 20 okay 21st 22nd 26th 25th and 26th okay if you could see they are traveling on various days so everything has been mentioned on this particular thing so that completes your chapter 3 also which is tourism and uh, aviation industry now i had actually left with one thing in it um the uh, you know connection between the uh, tourism and the aviation industry which i already told you in the last class okay without aviation no tourism without tourism no aviation so it's an interdependent one okay so uh, as and when as and when the growth keeps on coming up in the aviation industry tourism also now i believe nowadays since due to covid we have sort of restrictions lot of restrictions but still okay um, tourism has been started now again okay where people have started coming from various um, you know countries uh, so it's all the first thing what we think about tourism the first comes into our mind is aircraft right so we will go by aircraft because that is less time consuming so that is what they you know they think the 40 hours journey could, could be covered in a 5 hours right so in 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 that way you know people tend oh, within that five after that five hours we can explore so much in that country 
this this is what comes in the mind of a people so you know uh, if i say tourism and uh, aviation industry are always interconnected interdependent they are not dependent they are interdependent because you know if if i say that tourism is not there also aviation sector can survive because you know there are people who is traveling for business purposes there are travel people who is traveling for other medicinal reasons okay but if you state about tourism aviation plays a major role okay major role because uh, because of the less time consumment okay fastest moving so in the all these case this both are interdependent now is there any doubts in this with this we will complete your chapter 4 no 3 i'm left out with just one chapter for you which is global trends in aviation industry so if god permits we will finish that also